<laughs> this is extremely frustrating to watch a situation like this unfold. In this video, I'm going to break down what happened in the Tuatai Tagovailoa. <laughs> it's a hard name to pronounce. I'm going to break down what happened last night in the uh, the Dolphins Bengals game, but I'm going to relay it back to the science around concussion and also second impact syndrome, which if this is the case, and I'm not necessarily saying it is because I wasn't there, but I think the evidence clearly points to this being a potential second impact scenario, which could mean uh, a very, very long and hard recovery for Tua, and I really hope that this is not the case. But let's go into what happened. But first, I want to take it from a perspective of what happened on Sunday first, and then we'll get into what happened last night. And I'll lay out the science as to why this is such a big deal and why the NFL doesn't necessarily have a concussion problem, but why they have a concussion management problem. The issue here, and what you'll see when I break into the science around concussion, concussions themselves are not really the issue, but having multiple concussions in a short period of time, i.e. on Sunday, and then again on Thursday night, can be extremely devastating, and in some cases actually fatal. And I, from what I've heard, Tua is conscious and has been released from hospital, and that is a good sign. But this could have been so much worse, and I still think the road to recovery is going to be long. And let's hope that they don't screw up the rest of this process like they already have with this player. So let's look at the first injury that happened on Sunday night. Now, you can see, or, or sorry, Sunday afternoon. So you can see here, he goes back, makes a throw. He's off balance. He gets shoved down. He's got a whiplash type mechanism and his head hits the ground. Now look at this, off balance. So concussion has signs and symptoms. There you go. S a sign is something that you can visibly see. There's very few of these. But in the NFL now, they have concussion spotters. So the concussion spotters rightly picked this up and went and did further evaluation. Let's take another look at this. So gets hit, falls down, head whips back, hits the turf, and then upon rising, you can see right away he's shooken up, his off balance, and then as he's coming off, the knees go wobbly and he falls down. That right there is enough to pull somebody out because that's obvious signs of neurological impact. You don't just fall to the ground like that, and when you're holding your head and shaking your head in pain and you're off balance and unsteady, this is because what's going on inside your brain is an electrical storm and you really don't have full control over your nervous system. So I'm going to break down kind of why this happens and if we understand what a concussion is. Well, a concussion is acceleration of the brain. So when his head hits like that, the brain will accelerate and decelerate. And the brain is actually two different tissue layers. So you have white matter that's deeper down and you have gray matter on the outside. As the brain undergoes acceleration, you get this fluid wave that happens in the brain. So imagine the head hitting the turf and the brain kind of jiggling around. And those two tissue layers, the white and the gray matter, they accelerate and decelerate at different rates. So what you get is this cross shearing that happens and you get a stretching of the, of the brain tissue. And when that brain tissue stretches, it goes into this excitatory phase where you get this electrical storm. And that's when you kind of lose control of your nervous system. So he's trying to walk off the field and his legs are not working properly. He's off balance. He doesn't know which way is up because there's so much activity going on in his brain that he's not able to make sense of the world around him. That's why this is an obvious sign. And that player needs to get pulled off the field immediately because for sure, they've had a concussion injury. Now they tried to play this up as a back injury and they actually let him back into the game. Now, there's no, unless there was some sort of spinal cord involvement, I can't see any reason for why he would be so, you know, off balance. And either way, you can get spinal cord related concussions anyway. So either way, there's a neurological injury that should be kept off the field um, for that, at least that game, if not longer. Now, if we, if we go into what happens after, so you get this electrical storm that happens, but then the next few hours to days, you get this drop in energy. If you could picture all of that electrical activity happening inside the brain actually starts to burn a lot of energy, more than we're able to produce. So over the next few days, you get this drop in energy. And what we've seen in studies in animals is that when your energy levels are low, you can get concussed easier and 
Not only that, if you get a second concussion, they can become additive and cumulative to the point where you can actually suffer a fatal injury. But if you get a concussion and you allow it to fully recover back up, you actually end up back in a healthy state to where you were before. So it's not necessarily the number of concussions you get that's the problem, right? And so it's not necessarily a concussion problem. It's a concussion recovery problem. And what's going on right now in professional sports and why they're under so much, uh, there's so much trouble around this and why we're starting to see a lot of these CTE cases is speculated to be due to the fact that we're not letting athletes recover properly. Now, here's a study that was done on animals. And what we see here is that we have a control group on the far left, and then we have a group that got a concussion, which is mild traumatic brain injury. They're in the middle here. You can see there's about a 20% reduction, and this is their energy levels. There's about a 20% reduction in their brain energy levels. If you go over here, you have a severe traumatic brain injury. Now, a severe traumatic brain injury, you can see, is a 50% reduction. These have permanent damage to the brain. This is when people actually suffer full permanent damage to the brain. Concussion is a temporary injury and you have about a 20% reduction in energy which restores back up to normal if you give it enough time. Now what they did in this particular study is, this is animals, this is rats, they let them wait for a full recovery and then gave them a second concussion or they gave them a concussion during the middle of their recovery. And you can see if they let them wait to their full recovery, which in an animal is five days, a little bit different in a human, they had no significant difference from having one concussion. Meaning that if you get a concussion, you fully recover, it's just another concussion. But if you get a concussion while you're still recovering, it's the same as a severe brain injury. And in fact, 10% of the animals in each of these two groups died as a result of their injury. So you can die from a severe traumatic brain injury, but you can also die from having two mild injuries in close temporal proximity. And this is the big concern that we're letting athletes go back on the field too soon. And everybody was calling this. People were already making mention of this. And I have a tweet that I'm going to show you in a second from Chris Nowinski that basically said, if this happens, this is going to be devastating. And then lo and behold, it happened. So let's look at this in humans. So the animal model, it takes about five days to reach that full recovery. Human studies have found that it happens somewhere between 22 and 30 days. So you can see here that you get this drop down three, 15 days were still significantly different. 22 days were still significantly different. And finally at day 30, that single star has disappeared, meaning that we're no longer significantly different from a control injury, meaning the human recovery is not five days, but it's somewhere between three and four weeks, right? And this kind of fits with um, a lot of the research that's been done. Now, a study that was done on humans looking at second impacts finds that um, if you get concussed within like the first 10 days, your recovery time now in terms of symptoms can be up to 60 to 90 days of symptoms afterwards, meaning that you go from a typical seven to 10 day symptomatic recovery up to months and months of potential symptoms. But not only that, instead of taking three to four weeks for your energy levels to get back up to normal for your brain to have recovered, it now can take between 90 and 120 days. So three to four months now. You go from three to four weeks if you have one concussion. Now, if you have back-to-back -back concussions, your recovery time to get your brain back to normal can be three to four months. And if you don't take that proper time, now you start getting concussed easier and easier and easier. And this is the big concern. So again, I'm going to reiterate, it's not necessarily a problem with concussions. It's the improper management of concussions. And here's a way that we can think about it. So if we think about it this way, we have 100% energy levels, right? Once we get down to about 60%, we're actually getting permanent damage to our brain. So you're walking around here at 100% energy. You get a concussion, you drop by about 20% down to 80. Takes you two to four weeks to kind of get back up to that normal brain energy. Now, the symptoms of a concussion typically go away in the first, you know, week or so. So Tua might have felt fine, but doctors should have known that his brain has not recovered yet. Because if you get concussed now, after your symptoms have gone away, but before your full brain recovery, you now get a cumulative effect where you're now dropping down into potentially creating permanent damage to your brain, something that's not recoverable. And now the recovery time goes up to three to four months versus three to four weeks. Now it takes you one to two months for your symptoms to actually go away. And now if we just rely on symptoms again, right? Maybe he feels better in a couple months and he goes, okay, I'm ready to play again. What if he gets concussed again? 
right? You're getting concussed easier and easier and easier, and now it's taking you longer and longer and longer to recover. You're potentially getting into career-ending issues, permanent damage, and lifelong impairment because we didn't wait the proper time. So again, it's not a concussion problem. It's a concussion management problem. If we were to take a, a better approach to this and rely less on symptoms and more on actual recovery of the brain, we would just end up with a concussion, and then we'd have a nice gap in between and another concussion. The recovery is the same. Cumulative concussions tend to occur when they happen in close proximity within that kind of 10 uh, days to 14 days window. This is at day five. That is really, really bad and potentially could have been fatal. And thank God it wasn't. But it, we're going to end up with a long term situation here. If he starts back in a couple weeks, we have a big, big problem and things can get much, much, much worse. If they, they need to take the proper time with this, uh, in my opinion, again, I wasn't there. I don't know the full story, but you can objectively see what happened after the first concussion. And I'm going to show you after the second concussion. But like I said, everyone was already calling for this. Here's a tweet from Chris Nowinski that said, if Tua takes the field tonight is a massive step back for concussion care in the NFL. Completely 100% agree. If he has a second concussion that destroys his season or career, everyone involved will be sued and should lose their jobs, coaches included. We all saw this. Even they must know this isn't right. He said that before the game. Now, here's what happened in the game. I'm sure everyone has seen this now. Here he is. Boom, gets tackled, thrown to the ground, head hits the ground quite hard, and he goes right into this uh, this flexion posturing, which shows that that's neurological injury. Look at how his fingers are locked like this, that he is unconscious. That also indicates that there's involvement of the brainstem to some degree. And that is an immediate sign of a loss of consciousness. Because think about the electrical storm, that electrical storm is going crazy in his brain right now. And it's just locking everything in place like that. And that's called a fencing response. Um, and he just goes right into it like that clear sign of loss of consciousness. Um, he's still unconscious at this this point in time generally uh, that's usually a sign of that and they had to then take him off the field on a stretcher this is a potential second impact scenario where you get massive amounts of brain swelling you get a massive decline in your energy levels to the point where you get permanent damage of the brain or the brain uh, or, or the person themselves uh, can die from this so this was a huge mistake and um, I'm very upset that this happened. I can't believe that this is happening at the top level after there's so much scrutiny on the NFL. The NFL, you know, wants to wants to show that they're doing something about concussion and they get these, you know, these stupid helmets and they think that's doing something. That's not doing anything. What it is is not a problem with concussion. You can try to put whatever you want on the head. Concussions are still going to happen. But how are you going to deal with them? when they happen, how are we going to take the proper steps to make sure that when athletes go back to sport, that their brain has recovered. We're not putting people back, you know, four days after they just had a, a, an obvious concussion that most people in the world picked up. And now you're getting a second concussion, right? If you would have let that person recover properly, this never should have happened. Um, and I hope to God that Tua is okay. Uh, thank you for watching. Put your comments below. I really want to hear from you. Uh, make sure to subscribe to our channel. We do all sorts of concussion related content. So if you are interested in concussion, uh, be sure to subscribe. I wish Tua the best and I hope that I don't see him back on the field for some time purely from a recovery of the brain standpoint. Thank you for watching.